All right, you lot, how's it going? Lovely Sunday afternoon. I'm just out here playing around with an engine. Look, I'll show you. This is a little, this is a liner for one of those little engines. I know some of you lot don't seem to like them for some reason, don't know why, but I think they're pretty cool. So we're gonna have a look at this one. Just have a brief look, since I'm out here playing with it anyway. It come with a monster truck and it didn't really run very well because it was quite low on compression. So what I'd done was stuck a bit of oil down the, down in the, well, down the buttonhole really, down there where the glow plug is. And that sealed it up and it ran briefly. We did determine that the bearings probably aren't a lot of cop in there, but there's quite a lot of goo in there that, and rust. So I'm gonna clean all that out with brake cleaner and um, well, oil them up and see if we can pull them through. I reckon we might have somewhat of a chance. But what I wanted to show you is, you can actually mend one of these if you want to, albeit not particularly well, but you can do it and that's what I've been doing here I've got a Jubilee clip around the liner just around the top of it there you can put it around the collar as well if you want to but this time I've put it there for now I've done it once already and this is the piston for it and it's actually done quite a good job now let me show you with a demonstration I've got a couple of liners there but I've got a piston and a liner here. I think it's the wrong piston for this liner. But this is a liner for a slightly smaller engine. Uh, this one's just about 5 cc's. Whereas this one's probably around about 3, 3.5, something like that. Anyway, so what happens is, because these pistons, they don't have any rings. If you look closely, this one's scored up. It's uh, one that I've recently rebuilt. Anyway, don't have any rings on. They have little lines, but there's no rings, so to speak of. So the way that it seals between the piston and this liner is just friction, basically. They call it pinch. And this liner, or sleeve, if you'd prefer to call it that, is tapered ever so slightly so it's wider at the bottom and thinner or narrower I should say at the top so as as the piston goes up it starts to get wedged around about there somewhere it starts to get wedged and it will go further it will go almost to the top but it becomes very difficult to go up that far because it's tapered as I've just said that's how it seals that's how it keeps the combustion on top of the piston without letting it seep past the piston obviously on a petrol diesel engine you have rings four rings three rings two rings one ring to do that job you have oil scraper rings you have compression rings and so on and so forth but you don't have them with these little engines that's how they work now when they wear out, or if the piston's left at TDC after it's been run and it's cooled down, it can cause it to lose that pinch or that taper. Usually they just wear away, and that's when you start to lose compression. And with these little engines, once they lose you know, a fair amount of compression, they won't really run very well and they won't start. This particular one, although after I took it apart, it did have a reasonable pinch. It had a reasonable taper left on the liner, but it wasn't enough to create enough compression. That's why when I put the oil down it, it sealed it up and it ran for probably about three or four seconds, maybe even five seconds if we were lucky. Once the oil had burnt off, that was it, it had enough. So I've taken it apart. That's the block left with the crank shaft in it still this is nothing to do with it <laughs> this is a completely different engine that's that there so just for fun i have done a little bit of research and you can still buy this engine's about 20 years old this particular one they were made slightly before that but this particular engine's around about 20 years old it came on this monster truck here but we're not interested in this for the time being because well 
every time I feature something to do with radio controlled on this channel, you all get the ump. So we'll leave that alone. But we're going to talk about engines because that's what this channel's about. Engines. So, where was I? Yes, it's around about 20 years old. Don't know how much use it had, but looking at it, I think it had a fair amount of use. Sometimes, or probably six, seven times out of ten, I used a blowtorch to get the amount of heat that I want in there. But today I didn't feel like it. I thought I'd crack out the heat gun. This goes to 550 degrees. There's a few ways that you can do this. But I like just sticking... You have got to be careful putting it in a vise, by the way. Um, because it goes without saying. If... Oh, that's melted to it, though. Melted. It goes without saying. If you're heating it up with a Jubilee clip around the top, and, the, and when it gets hot, the Jubilee clip is pinching it together again to make the taper back, to make the top half smaller, so the piston becomes wedged again to create a seal. If you're putting this bottom half in a vise and doing it up, it will start to misshape the liner, and it will become less round, and it won't fit properly back in the block, and also the piston won't go in it properly. So you don't do the vise up very tight. I just had it in the vise, Look, see, I know I undone it slightly, but I had it enough just so it held it in place so that I could heat it up and get my ratchet on there to do the Jubilee clip up as I was heating it. So this is under quite some tension now because I've been heating this up gradually, doing up the Jubilee clip a bit tighter, letting it cool slightly, and then heating it up some more. The Jubilee clip then goes slightly loose. I tighten it up a little bit more. And then you just leave it. Leave it to cool down, to go fully cold. And then when you take the Jubilee clip off, the taper should be back enough where it pinches this piston when it gets somewhere near the top. So, you can do that. You know, I would consider it to be a bit of a bodge. But a lot of people just do it anyway. And that's the way they keep doing it. But the thing is, the more you do that, it will start to wear the inside of the liner. Because obviously, there's only so much material inside there. And you will get to a point where that will start to wear away. But that's nothing to worry about, because that will take a long time to happen. So, if you can't afford, or you've got an older engine where you can't get the piston, the liner and the pistons, that's what I was going to say that I got distracted with. I can't remember why I got distracted now, but I did. You can still buy the parts. You can buy the pistons, the liners, the bearings, the conrods, the crankshafts, the gudgeon pins. You can buy everything for this 28 engine still. Even though it is 20 years old, you have to get them from a place called Ripmax when you then have to go to a dealer to do this, to do that. But you can still buy them. But the price of them parts comes to more than buying a new moderner engine is. They don't sell this... Um, XTM.28 anymore as far as I can see but to buy all the parts comes to more than it would be to buy a new one so you only rebuild your engine if you're just doing it for fun like I am just messing around with this for fun because I haven't got anything to lose because it was broken anyway this might work and it might see it through another th year two years perhaps of ordinary use but I might still buy the liner and piston anyway, so that I've got it in stock on the shelves. So when this gives up, I can just replace it. But for now, just having a little bit of fun. But I thought I'd share that with you, because, well, it's an engine. And that's what this channel is all about. Engines. Engines, lawnmowers, camper vans, cars, strimmers, all that kind of stuff. We're all about the engines over here. I love an engine. Just bloody love an engine. And I think these little engines are pretty cool. Even if you're not into radio-controlled cars. You might not be into radio-controlled cars. Fair enough. But radio-controlled cars with an engine. A real engine with a piston. A crankshaft, you know. All the little bits. A flywheel. Even a carburetor. Yeah? That you have to tune and do your stuff with. 
and a clutch, centrifugal clutch, and all that kind of stuff, and a bell end. <laughs> you can't go wrong. I think they're fascinating and I love them. I thought some of you might like to see that and to know that you can do that and you can mend this. And it's a nice Sunday afternoon, plus I thought we could just say hi to each other because we don't say hi all that often, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. Should say hi more often, but we don't. Maybe that would change. Maybe that would change. Anyway, I'm going to leave this overnight, actually. It's fully cold now. I can put it in my hand, but I'm going to leave it overnight just to stay like that to try and keep it in its shape that I've given it now as long as possible. Then I'll probably put it back together tomorrow. And I'll see if it runs any better. If it runs on its own without putting any oil down it, I'll know that I've done something that actually worked for the time being. Because it wouldn't run before. The compression was so low that it just wouldn't run. It was all seeping past that piston and going straight out of the exhaust. Um, well out of every orifice it could find probably with it being a two stroke anyway there we go you lot i'll catch you lot on the next one brief little uh hi how's it going there's an engine sort of thing i know i know i'll catch you later thanks for watching i have got a lot to do with the camper so if you're here for camper videos there is a lot of Tolbert stuff coming up. I've got to do a so I know I say it every time, but things just come up, don't they? You know, I spent the day mending somebody else's caravan, which is great, and I, I like to do other people's stuff ahead of mine because I can do mine whenever I want, but they can't do theirs. They don't know how, so they kind of rely on me to do it for them. So I'd rather just do it, and then they can get on with their merry way, and I can get on with mine afterwards. Mm. Anyway... I've got to do the brakes. The rear brake on the right hand side got stuck on the other day on a, on a motorway or as an A road. And it melted it completely I think because now the pedal is all the way to the floor. There is brakes but the pedal goes to the floor. So I need to have a look at that. It's all coming up as and when I get a chance. Anyway, I'm going to have a play around with some more engines on the bench. I'll catch you a lot later on. Thanks for watching. Take care and just remember to love life because that's what we're here to do.